Hey, what's up? Made it through the TPA. Uh, gonna move on a little bit. I do have the second batch of flavor revolution flavors I picked up through Nicotine River. So the first batch were fruitier stuff in general. Um, I decided to go for creams and custards this time. So I have a lot of permutations here. I have their cream. I have their vanilla cream. I have their sweet cream. I have their custard and I have their vanilla custard. So let's, let's, let's get right into this. Also, I feel like I need to mention, uh, Graham told me I should be wearing a beret while doing this. Um, Great joke, just good luck finding a beret that fits on my giant head. So we're gonna start off with their Plain Jane Basic Cream. So it's always kind of hard for me to like single flavor test creams. Um, generally there's not a whole lot going on, especially like normal basic cream flavors. Like if you ever wanna be terminally bored, try to test flavor arts fresh cream. It's a fine flavor. There's just nothing interesting about it. Uh, this is a little different. It's, it's kind of weird. Uh, so, when they say cream, I was expecting something like a fresh cream. Uh, instead, what I got was sort of a dry vanilla. Way more vanilla in here than anything that actually tastes like dairy. Um, it's a very bright kind of vanilla, very commercial vanilla. That's straight vanilla, and, you know, there's no darker nuance here. Um, and it's pretty overwhelming to any kind of, like, cream notes that are going on. Uh, I do maybe get just a tiny bit of like buttery richness, but it seems like it's buried pretty far back in the mix. On the bright side, these are dap free and I didn't pick up anything that like tasted too sour or rancid to it, but I definitely get more cream sort of on the breath after the vape. Uh, it just doesn't really show up when you're vaping it. To be honest though, I'm not really in love with the vanilla here either. Um, so it is that brighter vanilla, but it also tastes a little bitter and strange and chemical, especially after like two, three good rips to it. It just doesn't really come together for me. Uh, the mouthfeel on this is really, really dry. Um, you know, you do have some vanilla going on in the top notes, but it's just like a weird sort of thin dry mess to me. Doesn't really click into doing what I expect a cream flavor to do. Uh, so if you were gonna be using this, they suggest 2%. That's that's pretty good. I tried it at 1% and 3%. Um, neither was fantastic, but 2% isn't going to be wrong. Um, but yeah, I'd probably end up skipping this one if you're looking for anything like a fresh cream. And there's a lot better vanilla creams out there on the market. So speaking of vanilla creams, I do have their vanilla cream. So for me, at least, it's kind of hard to describe this not in the context of trying that last cream flavor. Um, this is a light, fluffy vanilla cream, but for me, at least, it does it a lot better than, than their straight cream. It's that same kind of like bright vanilla. There isn't a whole bunch of nuance to it, but it feels a little bit more filled out. It doesn't get as like dry and sort of chemical. Um, it's just like a nice, light, soft vanilla. And again kind of lacking on the cream notes. I don't know. It seems like even less creamy than their normal cream. Um, but on the bright side, that means there's nothing like really weird there. There is like some kind of waxy mouthfeel, but it doesn't really taste like a buttery kind of dairy richness. I think overall, what this really reminds me of is something like Cool Whip. Um, you know, it's fluffy, it's light, it's vanilla, but there isn't really much to it past that fluffy, light vanilla. And this might actually end up being useful, you know. Um, a lot of flavors are really aggressive, really big bullies. Um, this seems like a good, delicate cream for layering in particular. I think, like, it work well with some of those lighter cake bases, like Flavor West's white cake, that don't have really the the guts to stand up to like a heavier more buttery kind of whipped cream flavor i think this will work pretty well too with like layering with soft delicate fruits like blueberries and stuff like that i think this would end up being a pretty good fit um but yeah i mean it's not really a bold aggressive vanilla cream but it could be a really interesting sort of specialty tool if you want to keep your mixes a little bit lighter and fluffier completing the cream trifecta here i have their sweet cream so this is actually pretty decent. Um, of all of the creams I've tried so far, this is by far the creamiest. It, it has like the most actual dairy notes to it. I do get like 
some vaguely realistic buttery richness to it, which is good. Uh, nothing butyric, nothing sour. It's kind of like a whipped cream. Um, it has that fluffier texture to it. Uh, it doesn't feel like quite as flat as something like a fresh cream flavor. I say like on the spectrum of sweet cream flavors, it falls a lot closer to Flavor West sweet cream, which is also kind of a whipped cream flavor as opposed to like TPA or Capella sweet cream. It's, it's not the densest flavor, you know, it's not the richest flavor. Um, it does definitely fit into that whipped cream genre though. So if something like Capella's vanilla whipped cream is ending up like too aggressive for you, I could see like bringing this one in. I think it could be used again, you know, with slightly heavier bakeries, um, like the non flavor West yellow cakes and stuff like that. Uh, but it's, it's a good kind of moderate whipped cream when you don't want, you know, that, that big, heavy, buttery note to it. It's, it's pretty solid. As with all the Flavor Revolution flavors, they suggest 2% as a starting point. Uh, that actually makes a whole lot of sense here. You know, I found that 1% was maybe a little bit thin. 3% was maybe pretty heavily whipped. I think if you want this kind of nondescript, I'd go for about 2%. Bump it up to 3% if you really want to sort of embrace that whipped cream vibe. So moving into the world of custards, I have their normal custard. Testing DAP-free custards is always a risky game. Um, and I think I pretty much struck out here. Uh, this is kind of thin, kind of sour. It's just not really working for me. Uh, so there is maybe like a little bit of an eggy note here, but instead of using like something DAP heavy for, you know, the richness that you'd usually associate with a custard flavor, uh, they use butyric acid and there's a good amount of butyric acid too i mean i waited a month to try these um so they were steeping for quite a while so thankfully most of like the more vomity notes were gone out of it uh but it's definitely on the sour side there's there's a pretty good helping of that butyric kind of funk in there beyond that i mean i know they have a vanilla custard but i'm still getting some vanilla in here it's it's light though it's relatively light especially with what's coming up but there's also maybe something a little bit spicy in here. I know the description calls out like a caramel note and I don't really get any of that. It's mostly just sour, <laughs> sour tartness, a little bit of egginess, and then maybe some like a spice. So as not fun as this is to vape by itself and truly the room note on this is fairly horrible. Um, it might have a little bit of use, you know, it could work as like a tartar dairy accent. Uh, it tends to get kind of chalky and dry at higher percentages like yogurt flavors, but I think at like a lower percentage, like 1%, you could probably add some kind of vaguely milky tartness to like a heavier cream flavor, maybe even use it in with your yogurts. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. You're talking doubt free custards. I'm probably still on team flavor art for this one. And last out of this batch, I have their vanilla custard. So there's a lot of vanilla in here. Um, I'll say though, it kind of works to its benefit. So it does still seem to have that kind of like sour base to it. Uh, still kind of tart, but the vanilla kind of steamrolls a lot of the really funky notes. It still has a weird room note, still smells weird in the bottle, but it tastes distinctly less sour because you do have that very bright, almost overbearing vanilla. It doesn't really feel like a custard vanilla where I'd expect like some deeper, darker, spicier richness to it. It's still that very like bright kind of one note vanilla. Um, but you know, if I'm tasting too much vanilla, at least I'm not tasting the custard base here. Uh, you do get like, again, a little bit of egginess. Um, but yeah, there's some sourness, some tartness to it. Uh, it's, it's not, too bad though i mean as far as these things go it's it's a dap free custard i mean what do you expect you know it's less dry less chalky than their normal custard this i could kind of see using um work pretty well on top of like a richer ice cream base if you wanted to take something more in the direction of like frozen yogurt um it also probably worked pretty well with like a dap free custard where you're already using like a more realistic fruit that can take that kind of tartness and sort of bend it to its advantage. Uh, but yeah, I think you're going to have to figure out some application for this that really utilizes that tartness as opposed to trying to mask it. Just talking percentage wise. Um, so 
Test it is at one and three percent, and one feels tart and kind of thin. Three percent feels fuller, but it feels fairly sour. So again, that two percent recommendation, at least for this, seems to be about dead on. Uh, but overall, I mean, if you really need another dap free vanilla heavy option, this is probably a pretty good bet. But overall, I mean, if you don't mind dap, just just go straight for Inawera and call it a day. So yeah, just testing some of Flavor Revolution's creams and custards. Um, they're okay. I don't know. Uh, the the sweet cream and the vanilla custard would probably be like my picks out of those kind of flavors uh, from Flavor Revolution. But I think you have to really be married to the dap free thing to sort of start considering these. I don't know. It's always hard to sort of like judge a newer line by a limited sample size. But after going through some of their fruits and going through their creams, um, I'm not seeing a ton of really compelling reasons to add them to your mixing arsenal arsenal uh the one flavor that i found that i did like their flavor revolution mango um has kind of been a bear to mix with so you'll kind of see if these start showing up in people's mixes and for something that's been out for you know six seven months not really seeing them migrate into a lot of published recipes which is usually a pretty good barometer everybody always gets hype on like new stuff coming out but it's all about you know if it's actually getting used so I don't know. I don't really feel the need to dig all that much deeper into Flavor Revolution. Um, I feel like I'm biased when when you have those kind of like new lines that show up and are only available in one place. It's sort of the question of like, am I going to go out of my way to order any of these? And for me, at least, it's kind of a no. Um, I'm sure they have some better flavors in there somewhere. And, you know, most of these are definitely workable, but probably not going to go too much further into Flavor Revolution. But I, I did want to thank you for coming with me. I really do appreciate it. So if, if you were looking at these, I hope that was helpful. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I will catch you later.